my fellow Americans. Just kidding. <laughs> so I testified on Tuesday this week in front of the uh, the Senate uh, subcommittee for our unintellectual property about fair use. They asked me to do this because I talk about it a lot on my channel, obviously, with, uh, with all the demonetizations and blocking. I mean, most of my videos have actually been on blocking, but uh, I'm going to read you some of the testimony. I will tell you, uh, I'll tell you what I got asked a question by Senator Tillis, who's the chair of the committee. Uh, but let me, I'm going to read you a little bit of my, of my statement, my opening statement before I start, uh, discount code for today's live stream is RB731. It's 50% off the, the, uh, my YouTube Instagram transcription PDF bundle, which is 675 or something pages, uh, and 30% off my Beato ear training same discount code RB731. Um, <clears throat> that's how I support the channel. You guys know that. Or you can become a member of the Beato Club. I'm not used to wearing a tie here, but doesn't matter. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about my testimony. So this is not like doing a live stream testifying in front of a Senate committee, even though there were only two senators there. There's 15 senators on the committee, but the chairman, Tom Tillis, and the... Um, and Chris Coons, who was the uh, ranking member, uh, they were the only ones there conducting the hearing. And they had two sets of people. I was in the second group of five. Uh, there were a bunch of lawyers that were part of it. They were part of the, um, that were talking about intellectual property. And it, it was interesting because I want to say that a lot of it focused on YouTube more because if you listen to, Don Henley's testimony that I played, who had done who had done the testimony of the same committee a couple months before, uh, the his he focused mainly on YouTube when he was talking about um, when he was talking about having 60 people that worked for Universal Music Group uh, doing takedown notices. Um, this is what he was talking about. He's talking about YouTube. Okay, so they brought me in to discuss with YouTube because that's that's what I have my expertise in. Even though I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, but I'm not really on Facebook. But you guys should follow me on Instagram at Rick Beato One. Anyways, let me give you a little bit of my testimony that I uh, had here. I'm not going to do the whole thing. It's five minutes long or so, but I wanted to talk. Tell them I had to talk a little bit about myself and why. Uh, you know, I was asked to do this because there's people obviously watching this that don't know anything about who, I mean, most of the people didn't know who I am. Actually, two of the people that were in my group knew know my channel. So I introduced myself. I told them I have an educational channel that I call Everything Music. I've got almost 1.7 million subscribers on it. And uh, then I said, um, when I began the series, I uploaded episodes knowing that I'm talking about what makes us sound great. I said, when I began the series, I uploaded the episodes knowing that the videos would be instantly recognized by YouTube's content ID algorithm and demonetized. A demonetized video means the artist or copyright holder receives all the ad revenue generated from the video that would normally go to the content creator, me being the content creator. Some of the artists like the Eagles, Jimi Hendrix and Guns N' Roses, they're probably thinking, who? are ref what I refer to as blockers. Blockers are artists who have a zero use policy for any of their work, regardless of the length or purpose of the excerpt. I've never sought to claim fair use for any of these vid videos, even though a case could be made that I was providing educational content through commentary, criticism, research, and teaching based on the fair use policy defined by US law. Then I do give them a little background. From 1987 to 1992, I was an associate professor of music at Ithaca College. In those days, just as it is today, the use of recorded music for analysis and classroom instruction was commonly used and protected under fair use. In many ways, YouTube is the new university. It's a place where people go to learn things. The do-it-yourselfers who want to fix their hot water heater, consumers who want to compare cameras, one of my favorite things to do, and students who simply want to learn how to play a song on the guitar. 
In my view, this is the most important function of YouTube. As a songwriter, I've been signed to multiple publishing deals since 1992, most recently Sony ATV. I don't know if you guys knew that. I'm signed to Sony ATV. I've had songs on many records, including a number one million selling country song as recently as 2013. Out of my 750 videos, 254 have been demonetized and 43 have been blocked. That's not exactly accurate because the 43 that have been blocked, a few of which, maybe five of which have been put back up because I edited out the piece, uh, the offending blocking part, like I did with with uh, King Crimson, which is why I did that video on Don Henley. So uh, have been taken down or blocked. For the record, I've never had a copyright strike filed against me by YouTube, which is true. Uh, just to give you a little background, I'm deviating from the, from the script here. So if you get a demonetization, content ID claim is what it's called. Uh, let's say I used Pearl Jam, which I did, you know, for, um, uh, for the song Black. I finish the video, I go upload it to YouTube, instantly I get a demonetization. Before it goes live on YouTube, I get a demonetization. Now, what you could do, a lot of YouTubers upload things way in advance, a few days in advance. I don't. I only do videos when they're done, I put them up, no matter what time of day. So uh, if you have time, you could appeal this. You could dispute the claim and say, well, this is really fair use. Now, in the case of what makes this song great, it's probably not fair use. You know, there are there are lawyers that said, oh, it's definitely fair use. But I'm using the original sound recording. That is not really fair use, okay? Even though I'm breaking it up, you would say it's transformative because I'm doing an analysis of it. I'm breaking down the melody. I'm breaking down the harmony, so on and so forth. I'll get to that in my speech. So I never appeal these things. So this is, I'm going to get to this. Let me get back to my testimony. It says, this brings me back to fair use. Two elements of fair use that I believe covers teaching videos have to do with the amount of copyrighted material used and whether or not it harms the copyright holder's ability to profit from their original work. I would argue that if the video is using brief excerpts of music to demonstrate a compositional or production technique, it should be covered under the fair use guidelines. The rules governing the application and interpretation of fair use should be shouldered by all parties, not just the content creator. The concept of fair use is meaningless when frivolous or random interpretations allow a team of searchers, typically employed by a major label, uh, hara to, to harass or, uh, creators for content that falls under the legal definition of fair use. A clear-cut case of piracy is one thing, but there have to be exemptions for fair use. Now, I'm breaking away from the script here. There's... You can claim fair use on these things. I have some friends that are YouTubers that claim fair use, and almost all of them are denied because ultimately it's the labels that are deciding this, okay? And then it's, then I go on to say, one of my recent video, mu one of my recent music theory videos called the Mixolydian mode, they're probably thinking, what? Was manually claimed by Sony ATV, my publishing company, because I played 10 seconds of a Beatles song on my acoustic guitar to demonstrate how the melody is derived from this scale. This is an obvious example of fair use. And I'm breaking away again. One of the other people, one of the lawyers that was on here said after me, Rick Beato's music theories videos would definitely be covered under fair use, which I thought was very cool. And then I say, um, I said, this is an obvious example of fair use. In response, I made a video entitled The Music Industry's Scam to Rip Off YouTubers. This video describes how record labels employ content ID farms, essentially collection agencies, to manually claim YouTube videos for demonetization. Don Henley testified to this before this very committee. My video received over 500,000 views within 24 hours, and the claim was then released by Sony without me even filing a dispute. I believe the claim was released because I have a channel with over a million and a half subscribers and hence have a platform to air these grievances. Creators with smaller audiences are not so fortunate. I accepted the inv invitation to testify today because we need to find solutions to these problems. In the case of fair use, content creators should be protected from frivolous demonetizations. I'd like to propose what I call a fair use registry where one could get a certification as a good actor, similar to Twitter's blue check mark. I decided to use Twitter because all the senators use Twitter, right? 
When a video is posted, it can be checked against the database of certified fair users. The content creator would then be whitelisted for use. YouTube already sets benchmarks for channel monetization. The fair use registry work, would work along the same lines. The reason I create videos such as my What Makes This Song Great series is to introduce classic songs to new audiences and reinvigorate the same audience, same songs to older to older fans. Thank you so much for your time. So the idea was to was to offer a solution. This is, um, you know. It's easy to go on and complain about things. I do it as much as anyone else to complain about things that are wrong. But offering solutions is really a, I think the way that, you know, these are, uh, you're, you're more likely to grab someone's attention there, one of these senators and say, wow, certified fair user. That sounds like a good idea. You create a database, maybe people pay in, Maybe YouTube creators pay in 250 bucks a year or something like that. And they're allowed to use X amount of time. Now, everybody thinks, and I thought the same thing, oh, you can use up to nine seconds. You can use up to 30 seconds. None of that is true. If they have a zero tolerance policy, that means that, that these content ID algorithms instantly grab your video before it's up there. And when Don Henley says, oh, you know, there's all these, there's 6 billion things up there and 4 billion of them are, you know, are not using or are using pirated content. That's baloney. It's not true. It's just not. Uh, the, I, and I told Senator Tillis asked me about this. Why have you never filed a claim? And I said, well, one of the reasons is that, uh, that, you know, on what makes us sound great, that I don't necessarily feel that that is fair use. Uh, and, you know, it's the artist's copyrighted work. Now, I am providing commentary. What happens when I do things out of a, uh, like a film score, for example, um, what Hollywood does, I did like uh, one of my videos was a breakdown of the opening sequence, The Shawshank Redemption by Thomas Newman. What I did was I took the opening scene, I took away the music, and I re-mocked up the uh, string part, orchestral part, and then I had a piano reduction running along with the video. Now, what they did, what I, I forget who it was, Universal or somebody, um, what they did was they did a revenue sharing on it. And pretty, every single thing that I've done from a movie soundtrack is revenue sharing, where they split the money 50-50. Totally fair. And, you know, maybe the, the uh, maybe they, on what makes us sound great, maybe it could be a revenue share and that might be a fair, that might be a fair, you know, thing there. So um, uh, as far as the certified fair users, you know, maybe you pay a, I'm just throw, spitballing this, but, and I didn't suggest this to the committee, but maybe you pay a small fee each year to, to maintain the database and people to run it. Maybe there's, uh, you know, to have a your channel monetized, you need to have 4,000 watch hours within a one-year period or 1,000 subscribers, I believe. And honestly, every there's all these benchmarks on YouTube. Just to make a, uh, just to make do a live stream like this, you have to have X amount of subscribers. To do a thumbnail, a custom thumbnail, you have to have a certain number of subscribers. I don't know what it is. Billy, you know what it is or not? Um. But there is, like, there's all these different things, right? The other thing is that one of the reasons, and I didn't get to explain this because I didn't have time, honestly, and I didn't put it in my testimony, you had five minutes, is the three strike rule on uh, as far as copyright strikes. If I had a copyright strike, if I disputed this, they have 30 days to respond to the claim, to my dispute. If they don't respond in, th respond in 30 days, you get the claim released. Now, Typically with a big channel, you know, with a lot of subscribers, they will respond to those claims sooner, maybe. I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm assuming that might be true. Um, and the um, if you do get a copyright strike, Billy, is everything okay on here? The yeah, sound yeah. sounds good? Yeah. If you do get a copyright strike, they can... I think it's a seven-day suspension. I'm not positive of this. Uh, seven-day suspension of being able to release a video. 
And if you get two copyright strikes, you can't live stream for 90 days, something like that. I mean, it's really ridiculous, right? So you don't even want to take a chance. They they put this threat over you as a YouTuber so that you don't even want to challenge the things, right? And then if you lose it, you know, three strikes and they take your channel down completely, which is really, you know. Look, for people that are abusing it, okay, fine. You know, they know the deal. I know the deal, what it is. So my a clear case of fair use was my Mixolydian mode, me playing the melody, not using any of the Beatles sound recording to demonstrate how the scale is used. That's fair use. Now, I would have fought that claim if I didn't make the video the next day that got a half million views because of you guys getting on here. And frankly, people got on Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and they... they wrote to Sony ATV about it and the people took the claim away. That was it. So uh, I explained that to uh, to Senator Tillis and he got he got that. So anyways, you know, and the other side of it is that I decided that, okay, well, making money, making a living from the from views on YouTube is, uh, you know, that in order to make content that I want to make to actually teach people something, I'm going to be making content that get, gets demonetized. You guys know that. I said this way up front. I'd rather make the videos I want to make and, and not get any money, you know, rightfully so or whatever from the uh, from views on the videos, right? So, uh, and then teach the things that I want to teach. Because you have to teach using examples. If I'm going to teach, you know, cool guitar voicings, I'm going to play Alan Holdsworth. His, uh, an Alan Holdsworth song or something, or a uh, or a Pink Floyd song, although you'd get it would get taken down. Um, and and use an example from one of their songs that people know. You know, I would use if I'm going to talk about uh, you know the use of sidechain uh, compression, I would use something by you know Gravity or something by you know or what. I'd use or clarity for uh, I mean by uh, by Zed that, you know a song like that that uh, there's a lot of sidechain compression or maybe play an uh, Ariana Grande song or a Max Martin production something like that anything that that has a, a bunch of sidechain compression where uh, or someplace that, so, something that I had a multi track on uh, so yeah so that's instead of playing instead of me doing a mock up of something it's uh, you know it's to me, that's not an appropriate way to, to, to do it, to, to do it. Now, when I use examples of things like, uh, to teach a film score, those things are definitely fair use and, and, you know, doing a revenue sharing thing, I think is acceptable. But like I said, that's why I have my store. I've got a sale going on today of my Beato book, my bundle and my YouTube transcriptions, YouTube, Instagram transcriptions, Discount code, I'll do the shameless plug here, but it's RB731. That's how I support my channel, honestly. I support it through that. I support it with my ear training course. Same thing, 30% off, RB731. Go to beatoeartraining.com. You can check it out there. Or people donating to Super Chat here. You know, these are the these are the ways. Because frankly, most of my big videos are demonetized. They are. That's the way it is. But I'm not going to alter my content to make money on views, period. That's it. People need to have, uh, need to hear songs that they're familiar with to learn from, I believe. So, um, you know, and, and maybe, um, maybe the, um, you know, maybe it is, uh, Maybe one of these ideas, maybe maybe the senators say, hey, you know that, that Beato guy? Maybe that fair, certified fair user thing is kind of a cool idea. We'll take that. Okay, great. You know, and, and frankly, when people tell me on here, I always see this. Oh, you should get together with the other YouTubers and you should go to a different platform. It's like, I don't want to go to a different platform. And I don't want to do some class action suit or anything like that. That I honestly, I'm too old to do that. These things take years, and I'm not interested in that. I I want to talk about music. I want to teach people about music, and that's it. Period. So, you know, if I was if I was 30 years old and doing YouTube, 
yeah, I would I would fight this probably. I would. Um so so that's uh that's the deal with my with my testimony there. Um you know, honestly, if it wasn't for you guys subscribing to my channel and um and th oh, thank you for all the super chats, by the way. I haven't gotten to those. Uh, I'll get to those here in a second. Um, but if it wasn't for you guys not only subscribing to the channel, but going out there on Twitter and and you you don't don't harass people, but make it known that that you know that there are certain cases of fair use. And when I don't think something is fair use, I'll say it. I'll say no, I don't think that what makes a song great is necessarily fair use. The lawyer on the on one of the lawyers on the panel thought it was, you know. But uh, I don't. I'm not interested in that fight, honestly, right now. But I'm glad to to give my suggestions. Um, okay, so super chats, Ivy, thank you, um, Frank Zeppelin, awesome, very cool, Fr uh, Fretless sixty seven, yeah, very cool, very cool. Uh, let's see here, who else? Um, River two three one nine. <laughs> Big money sucks. Always will. Good thing money isn't real. Gold and silver is. <laughs> Let's see here. Ever considering putting my black videos on Dropbox for club members? No, you can't do that. That's that's illegal to do that, and I would not do that. Um, sending a small donation. Th do donation. Thank you, Chris Das. Appreciate that. Uh, Toro held. Thank you so much. Um, oh man, Andy R racks the cams. Yeah, very it's so cool. L E R. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you to everybody. Miguel uh, Miguel Hernanda, Hernandez. Thank you so much, everyone. So the, yeah, you know I appreciate this. Fre Fred Turd. <laughs> nice. Um, everybody knows Billy. I don't know how. Thank you for your passion and music from Berlin. Oh my gosh. Okay, everybody, Phil, uh, Jay. Oh, geez. Okay, so all the the people, thank you so much on the super chat. It's greatly appreciated. Like I said, subscribing to the channel, sharing my videos with people. That's probably the most important thing here because that's really how you build um how you build a movement behind these things too address things like fair use. Now, I will say this, and, and um, every country, the United States has its own laws on fair use, but every country has different laws on this stuff. I did a video, uh, I've done videos that were blocked only in certain territories. You might be blocked in a couple different countries. You can always get around that by using a, a VN, what is it, Billy? Oh. V, VPN. Yeah. Uh, another thing, anytime that you're watching that you see commercials, skip them, okay? It doesn't, I don't make any more money uh, from things by you watching them. I just don't. And that's a, that's a thing that, that uh, the five second skippable ads, as soon as five seconds are up, hit skip, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything. So um, now if people wanna see my testimony, you can go to the Senate website, the subcommittee, it's a ju judiciary committee, I believe that it's up there. I'll try and put a, uh, a link to it here in the description if I can um, if I can remember, if I can find it again. My brother had found it for me. But it was funny because I had my phone here and my siblings were all on watching it. I have six siblings. And um, I was texting them right up until I went on. But when I went on, I have to admit, I'm going to admit to you guys, like, I'm never nervous here. But I had a twinge of nervousness and my throat got a little bit dry as I was talking. And that's that's one of the first times it happens, which is ridiculous because nobody's really watching these things, you know. So, I mean, compared to this, that you know, I guarantee you 6,000 people didn't watch that. They probably had 3,000 people or something, if that, that watched it. Probably not even that many. Probably the families of the people that testified on there, and that was about it. So, uh, so you guys are are great. Uh, like this video, share it. Uh, the uh, RB seven three one is the discount code for my Beato book Instagram YouTube bundle. Pay, buying that is basically like the cost of half of a lesson with a guitar teacher or something or a piano teacher. 
that that's what that is. That's how you support the channel. That's how I can keep making videos. I don't do any sponsored content. I'm not, you don't hear me saying I'm, this video is sponsored by blah, blah, blah. Not that I have any problem with that. Well, podcasts do that. And a lot of YouTube YouTubers do that. And I commend them for that, but I don't want to um, be beholden to companies like that. And I want to be able to talk about things right from the start. So that's how you support the channel. Beato Club, you can support it as well. And uh, you guys are great. What do you guys think about the uh, about me wearing a tie? Should I wear a jacket and tie uh, for my live stream from now on? I, th I think we need to get a... Uh, to get a ruling on that. So I'll put it in the comment section and uh, anything you guys want me to talk about. I've got some new, what makes us sound greats coming up. Um, and I've been doing, I did a video yesterday on Neil Henning Orsted Pedersen, who is one of the greatest upright bass players of all time. Just an incredibly retro said, no, really weird. Just an incredibly great, great, great bass player. One of the most talented of all time. And my dad and I listened to his records that he was on constantly. And um, and he is he died in 2005 at 58, my age. And um, I wanted to make a video about that. I'm going to make these little short 10-minute videos on people that were my heroes, influences, things like that. I think that that's, uh, that's another thing. That's kind of another thing that I want to do, another series of videos. I don't really have a name for it. If any of you want to suggest names for that, please send that to me. So I'd like to think of something. Anyhow, you guys are amazing. Once again, RB731, 50% off my YouTube, Instagram transcription bundle. It's 750 pages or no, 650 pages, 675. And my Beato ear training course, RB731, 30% off that. You guys are awesome. And I'll put the link in the description when I find it for the testimony, for the actual real testimony I did on t last Tuesday. Thanks, everybody. You guys are the best. Bye.